Hey guys, normally we do a comedic ad at this time, but just want to give an update. Uh, Joe from Joe Shrimp Shack, Do- Joe Tyson, has uh, actually been having a bit of an emergency, so I want to apologize for any delays on orders and let him know. I'll let you guys know that any uh, specials that we're going during this time will be extended. He is uh, out due to uh, complications with kidney stones, so please play, pray for Joe, and uh, it looks like he has successfully been able to deal with that at the hospital with surgery. So I have a request of you. Please go on Facebook, find Joe Shrimp Shack Facebook group or Joe Tyson himself and message him a bit of love. Let him know that you wish him the best and that he is loved. And above all else, when he comes back to uh, his shop, I want there to be a ton of orders. So go to joeshrimpshack.com, order something. No, there'll be probably a day or two delay on getting it shipped out, but put in the order notes that, uh, we're happy you're back. Get well soon. And don't forget to use promo code Aquarium Guys at checkout for 15% off everything in the store. And uh, Joe, get better, buddy. Welcome to the Aquarium Guys podcast with your hosts, Jim Colby and Rob Zolson. All right, guys, welcome to the podcast. Woo! Woo! I'm excited. What it, is that what there's powder on your nose? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not eating a powdered donut. I'm no. just excited. You're just, just excited because... Uh, because it took you like 45 minutes to get this all figured out. You found your grandson's baby powder. That's yeah, right. Yeah, definitely not the other stuff. Are you so, reliving the 80s again, Jim? I, I've never left the 80s, dude. <laughs> He's never, never left. left. <laughs> Anyways, I'm your host, Robbie Olson. I'm Jim Colby. And I'm Adam on the Shire. So today we're doing episode two, two. of Dr. Fish. We have the doctor in the house, ladies and gentlemen. James, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. How's it going, fishy folks? Fishy folks. Fishy folks. See that? We got to do like fish people. We got to have some tagline. He likes to interact with the audience. He's showing us up already. Taglines? Something. All right. Cool cats and kittens. Oh, okay. Never mind. Moving on. So, James, (laughs) thanks again for being a trooper and joining us. And again, just want to put this out there that it's not only a thank you to you, James, for saying yes, because that's a big one, right? But also, thank you to Seagrass Farms for allowing us to steal you from their wonderful facility. Uh, for those that don't know, Seagrass Farms is one of the, if not the largest, right, uh, wholesaler of tropical fish to pet stores and other uh, establishments throughout the United States and more. And more. And more. Absolutely. So th- thanks for the, thanks to, to them. Go to SeagrassFarms.com if you're a pet store and like to purchase uh, high-quality fish. So. What? Jimmy. Yes. I'm here. We always start the podcast out about hearing about, uh, you know, details of the week. Details of the week. I know you got something. You've been sending me news articles and shit. I've been sending some news articles. I I, I ran into a local celebrity uh, today, which was pretty funny. And you won't, you won't have any idea who he is, but I thought it was pretty funny. So, uh, whoa, whoa, I thought Jerry Lee Lewis is still alive. Jerry Lewis is dead. Dumbass. No, he's got to be alive. <laughs> no, I think he's dead. He's like 102, isn't he? Oh. Oh. You make me feel like I'm 102. Who'd you see? Who'd you see? Well, uh, for for those of you who who like country music, yeah, which I am not one of those people, by the way, there there's a gentleman from North Dakota. Well, who, then why do you wear assless chaps to the podcast? Why? <laughs> because of all the trapeze work that we do later on after oh, the podcast. Okay. Exactly, you know what that's all, all right. about. No, the um, back in I think it was 2015, 2016 on The Voice, Blake Shelton picked out. Uh, a gentleman from North Dakota named Blind Joe. And uh, for those of you who don't know who Blind Joe is, you can, you can go on there and, and giggle it on your inner tube or Google it on the internet, however you want to do it. And uh, he was, him and his wife were just happened to be at the, the local convenience store when I went in today. And Blind Joe is blind and not making fun of Blind Joe at all, but he has a wonderful sense of humor. Wait, wait, how do you really know? Did you, like, jump in front of him and dance or something? Or did uh, you try to trip him in the aisle? No, no, I'm not that big of a jerk. Um, no, he, he was in there, and they were getting a soda and a piece of pizza, and somebody said, excuse me, he goes, are, are you Blind Joe? And he goes, and he kind of turned towards me, he goes, do I owe you money? And they, the gal went, no. He goes, yeah, I'm Blind Joe. <laughs> And uh, so he sat and visited, and he took some pictures with people and whatnot, which is kind of fun. And then uh, as I, I went outside, um, there were several people that stopped to take pictures with him. And uh, he said to his wife, he goes, uh, I'm going to drive. And she goes, you know what happened the last time you drove? 
And uh, he goes, yeah, we got pulled over. So he was just kind of making fun of his uh, blindness and stuff. But uh, pretty fun guy. And and uh, if, if you look him up, um, he's got a new album out and uh, just a hell of a nice guy. He's from North Dakota. Check him out. I, I looked him up and I'm not going to lie. He's got a pretty awesome hat. I'm not a big fan of the country look. He had on that black hat today. Did he? Yes, he did. I mean, that is, you got to have your style look. Yep. Like, and uh, you can't see, uh, what is it, dude, Edward Scissorfingers, help me out, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. You can't see him without, you know, um, bracelets. I mean, that's. That's correct. You got to have your stereotypical accessories. Or your eyeliner. Or but, your eyeliner. But the uh, the interesting thing is that he has a new coronavirus video out that he just did about coronavirus, which was pretty fun. So check that out. Maybe we can play a little bit here. Maybe a little bit. All right. So other news right because we're going to save our questions for next week because we have all the questions this week saved for dr fish so our normal questions will be answered next week but in the news right i heard that uh, they have genetically mutated and crossed two species the russian sturgeon and the american paddlefish are now the sturtle fish sturtles it, you know more about this clearly I, I i read about it and first i thought it was something they did um uh, but it sounded like it happened on, on its own is anybody aware? Yeah, it was of, an accident. Was it an accident? Wasn't it? Yeah, I read the article. They only had like sixty-five fish, because and they only, and they only lived to like they were at sixty-five days and counting. It was actually pretty interesting because apparently they're it's like a mouse breeding with a human. What they said genetically, which I thought was interesting. So, but yeah, it just seemed pretty cool. I mean, you can yeah, they huh? You can look at the article. There's like a few different versions of how they came out. They have essentially ones that look more like the sturgeon, ones that look more like the paddlefish, and then ones that are like perfectly 50-50. Like, so you got a nice array, but they're expecting that they're going to be sterile, much like mules, ligers, other crossed animals. Bigfoot. Adam, I blame you. You did this. Oh, I would have if I could have. That sounds like a cool little project. Because Adam never asks if we should. He only asks if we could. He never asks permission. He just apologizes. Life finds a way. Right. Life finds a way hashtag four children so do you know any details about this james you're, you're giggling i know you're holding it back this is not a podcast no, no. to hold it back man actually no i i, I hadn't heard about that i'm i i missed that missed that's because that, you uh, work too damn news. much if you had as much free time for us just to, to be on the internet you would know a lot of stuff you don't even need to know like well this you got to do us a well, favor james oh, go ahead go ahead adam i have a do i do have a could you crossbreed hypothetically in quotes Angelfish and discus. Has anybody oh, ever tried that or no? I, I I don't know anybody that's ever tried that. Uh, typically, yeah, uh, cross genus doesn't typically work, but you know, there are times that it has. I mean, you would assume that it would happen in nature somewhere, especially because they're supposedly in the same river systems. You know what I mean? But who knows? I, I literally yeah. googled it just to make make sure I can't see any crosses online posted. Now, after this, we're going to get, like, every cross species known to man from all of our fans. So we, we started a craze. That's probably for all those toad lickers. Well, you got to do me a favor. <laughs> you have to go after hey. the podcast, James, and reach out to Sandy Moore and tell her that we need sturtle fish on the secrets lists. <laughs> I, I will I will tell her that. Excellent. Excellent. You know, that wouldn't actually be that bad of a thing to mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I, you. I know. Adam doesn't get a lot of sleep. He's got four kids. Not at all. <laughs> What else you got, dude? Well, if I go uh, go through my messages here, I, I said I wouldn't do too many questions, but I just want to do a shout out because mainly because they've yet to talk to me back. But they, they sent us out an email. I think I forwarded it to you, Jimmy, that a uh, aquarium club in New Jersey called the Skylands Aquarium and Water Garden Group. Right. I, I looked this up. It's not some sort of like a group for a business. It's a private aquarium club in uh, northern New Jersey. Northwest New Jersey specifically, because they have to section it out. There must be a lot of clubs there. And they've reached out to us to see if we would, because uh, during COVID, they're doing online presentations for their group, to see if uh, you and I, Jimmy, would uh, go and guest for them. Oh, we'd love to do that. So th the problem is, is Jimmy, what are you going to pick as a topic? What am I going to pick as a topic? Well, that if, if because I messaged him back saying we, we certainly would. I haven't gotten a message back since. I didn't think they were, maybe they didn't think we were going to message back. Probably not. That's why we're doing a shout out. So if you listen to this, uh, I think her name is Sue. Yeah, that's just back. We're, we're, we'd totally do that. For give, you. A, give us a holler. We'll make stuff up. We don't know anything about it. 
kind of like everything else we do. I mean, what, what topic though? What topic? Yeah. This is an aquarium club. Absolutely. I, I would say how, how to uh, maybe make more money for your club by selling paddle sturgeon fish. <laughs> so, oh, now I'm getting the name wrong. Sturtle fish. <laughs> Sturtle fish. I love it. There we go. I have a Sturtle fish giveaway. That's, I think that's the only way you can cross that name, though. I don't know. Who knows? But uh, I just wanted to mention that because if anybody else has a aquarium club or group that they would like us to speak at, it, you know, time willing, and we're not completely booked up, we'd uh, happily work with anybody that uh, wants to request. We're here not just for the podcast free to anybody that wants to listen, but if we can help out a, a group in some way or somehow, let us know. We have our contact information, aquariumguyspodcast.com. It's on the bottom of the website. And uh, we'll do what we can. No promises, but we'll certainly uh, do our best. Take a look. Where, where is this aquarium club? Northwest New Jersey. Never been. Okay, if I if I go with you guys, I'm flying separately because I know Jim and Rob's will have me randomly selected for airport security. Oh, are you kidding? If that I, just happens on its own, Adam. Just looking at you. <laughs> if I was in an airport line, I'd be like, "Hey, you gotta check that dude." <laughs> like, I like bump the dude. Like, I think he's got something in his groin. I, I would just walk by re- and really loud go, "Hey, thanks for taking my luggage," <laughs> and just walk away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely going by myself. I'd be like, did he just take off the turban? Is that what? <laughs> and then I would sing my favorite song as I walked away. La, 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 bamba. <laughs> For those that uh, aren't uh, able to see, we are actually on Discord Live. We try to do a uh, podcast live on Mondays at 7 p.m. It was a little late today, but it was still close to 7. And Adam is uh, sitting there covering his face. So if you'd like to join the embarrassment of picking on Adam, uh, come join us, aquariumguyspodcast.com. You'll see that link at the bottom of the page. There we go. But that's my news. That's I mean, your news. What do you got, Adam? What do you got this week? Well, I was going to talk about the sturtle fish, but... Rob kind of took that oh, away from you. Oh, yeah. shots fired, son. Right. <laughs> That's all right. I'll find that. I don't have much else. I'm How, good. How's the how's the masks uh, industry that you're in? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And a duck. And we all will right. just move on from Moving that. on. So, James, before we get started, all right, we only get to talk to you, like, you know, every few episodes or so if we're going to be continuing to do this in the same schedule. He's wondering if he wants to do it. Anymore. You know, <laughs> yeah, sir, I don't think he wants to. It's been a while. I know you were sick before. Are you feeling better? Did you catch the COVIDs? Yes, I had the COVIDs, my wife and I. Did. Uh, you did. You did. Yes. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Uh, low-grade fever for 12 days, whether we took medication or not. Uh, total loss of sense of smell and taste. It, it was really crazy. Hey, at least now we can eat Taco Bell and, and actually enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny, but There's it's true. Did you get it back? What was that? Did you get your sense of smell and taste back? Yes, yes. That's all back now. Uh, everything's back now. I, I would say, and I probably 95% physically, uh, the it, it took it took a considerable amount of time, though. It was the sickest I've ever been. And uh, my wife's a nurse, and, and we get all these updates and stuff. And uh, you talk about the olfactory sense, uh, losing your sense of smell. They have uh, found out why it attacks the uh, olfactory sense and the reason it doesn't do any permanent damage. So majority of, you know, almost all the people are getting back their sense of smell, which is, is great because you don't really realize how much you rely on that. Yeah, and the reason that you're losing your sense of smell is that a zinc deficiency is linked to that as well, and your body uses zinc to fight infections and to create new healthy cells. So this infection is so heavy that it's depleting you of that, and so you're going to have some of that loss of taste and sense of smell, just like when you have any other infection or a cold or whatnot. All right, little story. And James, number one, we're glad you're healthy. You're Almost completely recovered, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. And, and your wife's still. And your wife's good. She she's good. Yep. So best of news, but I have a small tangent. So <laughs> one of my dear friends. Now he's like one of my dear dear friends. Like if you know, I was stuck. In, Is this your imaginary friend? It's not. Is this Clarence? Not. If I was stuck in a jail, he'd be there to bail me out, right? Because he's a sensible one. He wouldn't be there with me. No, a true right. friend doesn't bail you out of jail. A true friend is in jail with you. Right. But I'm saying he's that he's true friend, but he's still responsible. Oh, a responsible friend. That's what I'm trying to point out. So it's your make-believe friend. So I was a prior manager at Walmart in yesteryear, right? And one of my new employees that uh, I was uh, <laughs> I was underneath me, um, he was at work on time, 
worked harder than everybody else. Great attitude and work ethic. Just loved the guy to pieces. But he always seemed a bit uh, like he was fearful of me, right? And I wanted him to be able to tell me things like it was and him that's not, not necessarily lie to me, but not necessarily give me the complete truth because he's intimidated by me. Like marriage. I'm a big dude. I wear sunglasses. I'm not the easiest person to be like, I... No. So I wanted to see if he'd tell me off, right? But I don't want to be mean to him. So instead, what I did is ate shitty food for like two days. And then every time I go, because at Walmart, you have these like little cell phone islands, right? Where people go and check out like the new iPhone and shit. He was in charge of that. So I go over there and like, oh, so how are our reports? And he handed me over the report sheet because we do audits daily on our inventory and new contract sales, the whole growth measurement, the whole thing. So he gives me reports. And then I just basically shit my pants right then and there. I mean, we're talking the most foul shit. I just farted, and I, I I managed to squeak them out where I, there was really no sound, but I I like gassed it. So 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 where's this going? Well, th- because of the sense of smell, right? I kept doing this. He wouldn't say anything. He wouldn't say anything, and I was getting him mad. Like maybe he is because oh, c- you're trying your best. Maybe he is just a brown noser. Maybe he's just really intimidated by me and won't tell me off. And every time I go into there, I fart. He doesn't have the will to tell me off. So every day I go over there and just carpet bomb the cell phone section to do my daily check-ins with him. And this went on for like a couple weeks until I found out that he has no sense of smell. He lost it at a very young age and permanently gone. So I've been carpet bombing his spot for like close, you know, three weeks probably. And, you know, people would walk by. He'd be like, oh, how can I help you, ma'am? And they get upset yell at him, maybe swear, and then walk off because of the horrible stench wall people would walk into at the cell phone booth. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised we're friends. <laughs> You're a dick. So, yeah. You're a giant dick. He wasn't intimidated Big, by me. Big, giant wiener is what you are. Just know that there's a lot more people out there without a sense of smell, and that's very important when you are <laughs> so, a, so you're saying in you're, a place of work. You're very excited about this COVID thing because people aren't finding you out. Yeah, I'm, I'm snuck. I can't just run into Jimmy's bread aisle and no, Carpet don't do that. So just a quick question, uh, Dr. Fish, when you <laughs> – off the fart subject. <laughs> that was five minutes. I'll never oh, get that. Oh, I know. I'll never get that back. Pe- people right now are just – You're welcome. That's going into beer. They're room. hanging up. That's why people come to this podcast. Come on now. So um, I've got – right now I've, I've got uh, one of my wife's friends and her husband both have, have COVID over in Colorado, and they're talking about the body aches being so tremendously – terrible did you have the body aches also or what what did you have for oh it was brutal yeah uh a lot lots of that uh also uh we both slept for 12 plus hours every day and and i mean just walking from you know the the living room to the bedroom was damn near exhausting uh no no shortness of breath or or anything like that so we were fortunate in that uh a lot more people have had a lot worse problems than us uh, but I will tell you, it lasted so long that uh, the first day I went back to work uh, was two Thursdays ago. And I think if I had been out of work for any longer, I would have probably needed physical therapy because the muscle atrophy had already set in. I mean, I was I, I, I was completely shot. My, uh, my, my, my hamstrings were killing me. I mean, my calves, everything, everything was sore. That is that is mm-hmm. tremendously uh, horrible about uh, about all the people having COVID. But thank goodness you didn't have any of the respiratory issues. And it sounds like you're back on the mend, so that's fantastic. Yes, absolutely. The first question we have is: I I have a beta that suffers from fin rot on the regular. I'll treat him; he heals up over a period of time, and then inevitably returns to melting. My water parameters stay relatively stable. Is he just old or is there no point of return when a fish has been sick too long, often, slash often, and can no longer recover well enough? What's the word, Uh, Dr. That's a tricky one. Uh, You know, it it really depends what the root cause of of the fin rot is. Uh, More than likely, if it's coming back and coming back and coming back, it's probably a a systemic bacterial infection. Uh, Not a whole lot you're going to be able to do in that situation. Uh, other than you know water quality so even so if something has like a bacterial infection is there like a point where the beta gets permanently damaged and is just more susceptible to that is there something that we can do to boost the immune system like (laughs) salt (laughs) 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Salt feed, uh, good feed, uh, probiotic feed. New aquarium. New aquarium. New aquarium. You can always get another aquarium. That's always Jimmy's answer. All right, next question. Can larger sharks like zebra, nurse, and black tip sharks get ick? I I do not believe uh the those have I, I, I can't say for sure, but uh we we've had nurse sharks for years and years. We carried nurse sharks, uh we carry up alet sharks, uh uh wabigongs. I, I've never seen uh cryptocarrion irritans on, on those fish. I hope not. So no shark gets sick? No, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I've not seen it on uh, on those the, the those the, that we've carried. Okay, what's a common parasite that sharks carry? Uh, lots of flukes. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. And, well, and t- intestinal that. parasites as well. Okay, just like the lice Adam had in the nineties. What? Lice I had in the night. How the hell do you even know if I had lice? Fluke you. See, fluke me. Yeah. Fluke you. That's what we got to do from now on. Forget, forget ducks. We're replacing the word with fluke. Fluke you. Fluke you. <laughs> <laughs> where's that Where's that shock collar, Jim? I'm going to put it around his... Never G- mind. Hey, I'm going to report him to HR for being all S&M, wanting me to get whipped and shocked all the time. Most it's people, creepy, bro. Most people pay extra for that, so just be happy you're getting it for free. Well, next question on the list. I had a female flower horn that came into the rescue with duck lips really bad. She didn't make it. What would you have treated her with? Salt. Uh, more than more than likely, that's a uh, uh, that's a viral issue. Uh, not a whole lot you can do with do for it. Uh, really good water quality. Uh, you know, pre- uh, really good uh, nutrition. Uh, other than that, not. not not much you can do. Uh, now, now, Jim, a couple of times I've seen angelfish come in with huge duck lips. Is that the same thing with them? Correct. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Robs? Because I get every time it's like people say oh, it has duck lips. I just think of like the retarded millennials going. I'm thinking <laughs> you're a retarded millennial. Rob. You are a retarded millennial. <laughs> See, can we even say retarded? I don't know. Check. It's our podcast. That's yeah. why we're not on YouTube. Okay. We can say retarded. Mentally challenged. Millennial. Not better, Adam. Not better. Well, the, men, the ones that are mentally challenged are born that way. You have no excuse. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> like we said before, close the microwave when you're running it. Close the microwave. Close the door. What else you got? What kind of issues can come from losing the water alkalinity? Well, your alkalinity is going to uh, control uh, your – stabilize your pH. Not necessarily control it, but it's going to keep it stable. Uh, it's going to keep it from crashing. Uh, it also, uh, and, and another, another side effect of that is if in freshwater, typically once your pH goes below around 5.5, you're not going to get any biological filtration. So on, uh, on, on the next, on another level, it can also affect that, but primarily just as a, a you'll lose your buffering capacity, which, which will cause a pH crash. That's why I don't like okay. using just the, uh, buffers with pH up and down because, you know, when that stuff oxidizes and leaves the water system and you're not doing uh, changes enough. I mean, there's not a lot of forgiveness. Um, I just love this dude's name. Lobster dinner cracker uh, at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> That's like, Do they have lobster dinners at Cracker Barrel? I, I, they do now. I hope so. They do now. Uh, to what extent does temperature uh, instability lower a fish's immune system and invite opportunistic diseases such as ick? For example, an outdoor patio pond when outdoor temperatures yearly go as low as 45 and as high as 95. Yeah, uh, lower temperature uh, is going to slow down a lot of things in the fish. Uh, immune systems are going to be one of the last things to slow down, but but it can slow that down. Fortunately, the cooler water is also going to slow down the parasites at the same time. And in fact, uh, for bacterial infections, that that's a way that you can uh, tr- try to fight that uh, and, and get the fish uh, in better health uh, by actually lowering the temperature so the bacteria doesn't spread as fast. Not not raise temperature? Not for bacteria. For bacteria, uh, raising the temperature would actually exacerbate the problem and, and make the bacteria grow quicker. I didn't I think uh, that bacteria um, necessarily, I, I knew it grows in hot, uh, hot water, but I didn't know that lowering it 
helps a bacterial issue. It slows it down. It's not, about that. It just it just slows down the progression. So, it, it, they're not going to multiply as fast in, in in a warmer in a cooler environment as they are in a warmer environment. So it slows it down. And of course, salt. <clears throat> now, speaking of salt, is there any benefit of using Epsom salt versus basic rock salt in the aquarium? I know Africans like harder water, and the added calcium elements from Epsom can help them. I've heard. Any advice for that? Uh, yes, actually, there's uh, there's quite a few great Rift Lake formulas out there online. Uh, lots of different people have done a lot of work on it, and uh, Epsom salts, uh, magnesium is definitely uh, included in that. A lot of people also use it uh, sometimes to help with uh, bloat uh, and goldfish. They they can do a uh, Epsom salt bath. So, what's the difference between Epsom salt and regular salt? Well, your regular salt is magnesium chloride. Your Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. Okay, so there's completely two different things then. Correct. Because Epsom salts is used a lot by uh, the medical profession for soaking feet and sores and different things like that. So, Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that clears that up. Have you noticed that different salts will do different things like, say, marine salt adding a little bit of that or even like reef crystals to um, hospital tanks? will do different things or no? I, like I, like you were talking about the different Epsom and versus regular salt, but like say you wanted to put in, I don't know, Himalayan pink sea salt. I'm just throwing that out there. Does every salt do different things? Have you noticed or no? Uh, or has it not been really experimented with? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't say on that. Uh, I, that. That wouldn't be my, my area of expertise. Uh, but uh, I, I have personally used uh, marine salt in freshwater systems, uh, just very small amounts, because uh, there's, uh, you know, there's trace elements in there uh, the freshwater fish like them too. When you guys get in the regular black and white coolies, you know, the big, the striped coolies, mm -hmm. have you guys ever, like when acclimating them, do you just keep them in pure fresh or do you mix them in a brackish type water and then acclimate them from that? Well, What's the, the best way to acclimate them? The, those are going to be held in one of our, our you know, brackish-ish systems, probably about uh, 3.5 to 4 uh, parts per thousand salinity. Okay. How, how many See, I, was, I was wondering if that was what, whenever you get them in, you, they don't live very well. When we bring them in and we put them in pure fresh, and I'm wondering if they're more of a brackish fish. So that actually helps. How many types of systems do you guys have? Yeah, we've got uh, in in the freshwater building alone, we've got twenty seven systems, uh, and they run they range from uh, six hundred gallons uh, up to four thousand gallons. Um, most of them being the four thousand gallon. We've got some closed systems, uh, uh, discus are on closed systems, uh, and then we've got two uh, hallway systems for fish from South America that are uh, also closed systems with uh, soft water. Uh, discus are in soft water, uh, and then. Uh, then we would go out to the main building, and we have systems that run from 0 0.5 parts per thousand uh, all the way up to 6 parts per thousand uh, in TDS or salt. Uh, and uh, also we have dedicated softeners on specific systems uh, as well out there. So is that part of your job uh, is to uh, watch the water chemistry there? Cor correct. Yes. And so, what does what does your normal day look like, Jim? My normal day is is making sure uh, the rest of the lab associates are, are staying on top of all, all of their duties, uh, which uh, are uh, feeding all of the fish, uh, uh, doing the water testing, uh, checking on water flow, checking filtration. Uh, pretty much, you know, all, if it has to do with keeping fish alive, that's me. And so that goes on seven days a week, ch checking the water quality and stuff. Yes, absolutely. And, and how, how big of a staff do you guys have to take care of all that? Because you have a hell of a lot of fish. Uh, for for the, the the basic uh, water testing and, and feeding and stuff like that, there's five of There's four, four associates and then myself. And so there's somebody there every day to keep an eye on things, just like milk and cows. You got to be there. Yes, yes. And our, our maintenance department is, uh, is is integral in that as well. Since we're on the, the questions on Seagrass, right, we can yes. sneak in Seagrass Farms because, you know, they even have to be careful when cameras come in because they do have trade secrets, sir. Oh, I know they have trade secrets because right. I've asked for them and they told me to go, to right. go fluke myself. To fluke yourself. To go fluke myself. <laughs> to go fluke yourself. 
and that probably i think that came directly from sandy moore if i remember right <laughs> go hey how do you treat she goes i'll stick it jim no no she didn't say jim <laughs> no she said naked man exactly yeah like everyone else does in florida that's right it's very <laughs> uncomfortable that's my nickname in florida we won't go into that right now so do how- we do you know how how epic you have to be to be known as naked man in florida I, I have know. an entire group of guys that fight like monkeys and alligators, and you're literally known as Naked Man. Yeah, it's, it's, we won't talk about that right now. We'll just move on to the next question. What happens in the 90s is uh, posted somewhere in Craigslist as a wanted ad. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, more on the topic. Um, how much salt does <laughs> Secret Farms go through on a regular basis? Oh, wow. Uh, I, I was actually asked this. is not for- my question. For for marine salt, so uh, uh, we're, I'd say he did the ordering last week. A thousand cases every two months or so. Well, how much is that's in a case? That's 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 a yeah. that, that that's a hundred and fifty uh, thousand hundred and fifty gallon cases. Yeah, I was gonna say you're talking those big boxes. Yes, Hot that's a lot of damn. fluke and salt. A lot of fluke and salt. That's right. <laughs> Smooth. Smooth. And on the on the softener on softener salt and salt for our freshwater systems. Oh man, that that that's a that that one. I honestly, I order the marine salt, so I know how often we go through it and, and how much we're using a week over there. Uh, on the uh, water softener salt, we oh man, there's pallets it, and pallets crazy. and pallets there. Pallets and pallets. Yes, yes, pallets and pallets. So now we're getting back to the fan questions, right? So uh, we have here, if Doc had to serenade wild discus getting into the mood, what type of alcohol would he pour? Just a tiny splash? Uh, would you put it in some into the tank? <laughs> what what uh, would you do to get, uh, get them in the mood? Somebody's looking to <laughs> breed wild discus, obviously. We don't hold back uh, the actually, easy questions they, here. They, they pretty much do it on their own. Uh, you, you can't really pair discus, but discus will pair themselves. You have to watch them, and, and then you can uh, separate out the fish that aren't pairing up, and uh, they, they'll go to town. So they're not like the Indian culture of arranged marriages? Uh, no. No. no they're very much free-forming, flows, 1970s fish <laughs> that will speak for their own minds. No, no. Yes. Even looking back, like, maybe seven, eight years ago— the wild discus, and uh, you get the green and the blue in, and, and do you pronounce them teffy or how do you how do you pronounce that? Yeah, teffe. Teffe. Yeah. I used to buy those, and, and Adam used to buy them directly uh, from me and stuff. But they have gone up dramatically in price. Is that just because of of collections, or, or what are you seeing there? Is it, are they just harder I, to get now? I. You know, uh, I I think some of that's got to do with uh, just the regulations on on. Uh, cites and stuff like that. Uh, not that there are cites fish, but just because of all, all the all the hoops you have to jump through to get them now, and uh, and still, you know, they are a pricey fish. Yeah, they're getting to be a little more. I, I know the last time I was down visiting, there was two pairs of discus in the tank that I, that I was looking at, and uh, I thought it was just kind of strange that they were they were paired up, you know, being in your tanks here because there's a lot of commotion going on. But the one pair regarding eggs that were on the uh, on the glass, does that happen quite quite often? Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, we just before just before uh, I was out with being sick, uh, we had some uh, three tanks that had pairs in them, and uh, we were able to uh, sell them as pairs. So that was really cool. Yeah, that's dramatically a lot more money and a lot more profit for you. So that's what you want to do. Thanks for offering them to me. <laughs> you got them, and you didn't offer them to me. That's right. <laughs> I well, yeah, but what do you have to trade? Endlers? I mean, who wants feeder guppies? Yeah, exactly. Go fluke yourself, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> That's a new t-shirt. That's a new t-shirt. All right, so next question is, is there any way to discourage my discus or angelfish from laying eggs on a heater? Not no. That I know of. Not that you know of? Put them in a sideways angle? I have no idea. They'll lay, you know, that's where you almost need to take your, your heater and uh, either lick it or stick it in your butt. <laughs> no, you know? that that's no, what they do to torture people. No, uh, you can, you can take and plant heavily around your, around your heater, which is goes against everything we've ever talked about, about heaters and stuff. But, Shame on you. But you can try to try to, to keep your, your uh, plants 
and uh, things that they don't like around their heater, like a lot of plastic plants around your heater would, would keep them probably away from the heater. Less from Cobalt already strike you off his warranty list. Just want to let you know that. Less was never going to give me my money back. <laughs> and we know that. We've talked less enough. Well, that's because you put every heater in the sump and he just doesn't like that. He doesn't like that at all. So when Brazil opens up, has that opened up yet officially or no? We're getting dribs and drabs uh, from, from down there. It, it, it's still tight. I don't okay. speak Florida. What's dribs and drabs? And what's tight? Uh, j- just, just a few fish here and there. Uh, n- nothing, like we, nothing like we were. See, we hear from, uh, was it Matt P- uh, Peterson from Amazonas Magazine? That he's excited because the new law, when it does open, apparently is going to open the floodgates because they have to be on a list to be banned rather than everything be banned if it's not on a list. Right. Yes. And, th- and that is a, that's a contentious point there. It's a blacklist rather than a whitelist for those that know programming. So you, you, if you're on the list, you can't go. If you're not on the list, it's free game. That opens up a lot of species in the Amazon. So maybe we get some spider monkeys and stuff. I'm so down. Spider monkey, or maybe they have a new turtle fish that they've been hiding. <laughs> that they've been these, hiding us. And that's how they just showed the species. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next uh, guy on the list. This one necessarily isn't uh, a question. Uh, it looks like there's an <laughs> added question at the you end. you got to ask it, though. We had a great white shark today attack today in Maine. A lady died while swimming not far from shore. Almost unheard of here. Really not far from shore. Um, on that note, number one, our condolences to the family of that poor lady, and that is super rare for Maine. But uh, on a more topical note, you know, what's the craziest stories of people getting injured at Seeker's Farms? Did anybody say get stung by a lionfish and then keep working all day long? Uh, we've had that happen. Uh, we've also oh. had we've also had uh, somebody get gashed by a, uh, a, a moray. Ooh. Uh, yeah, it was pretty. It, it, uh, it took stitches. Uh, did that get wicked infected? No, no, it didn't get infected, but it did take quite. A, I think it was seven stitches. Damn! But uh, what's your worst injury you know, for fish? My in, worst injury for fish. So that's happened to you while working or in the hobby or while uh, you know skinny dipping with your friends, <laughs> snapping uh, turtles, no, stuff like that. I, I I've been really fortunate. Uh, I haven't really had any any. I, I took a few stitches from uh, elbow to the corner of a tank once, uh, and uh, I had a big uh, big swollen bursa uh, on my elbow from where I was carrying an eighty pound bag of salt and slipped on some algae and landed on my arm. That's no good. That's not good. So th- this weekend, uh, I don't know if it's Shark Week has started or whatever it is, but I was watching. Uh, a program on TV and they're talking about the, there's so many more shark attacks, especially dur- around the Bahamas area. And they were going through different things that possibly could be uh, up, you know, the reasons that, that they're getting so many shark attacks. One was uh, the color of your swimsuit because so many of these swimsuits now have, have uh, really cool patterns and stuff and they make you look like a fish. And, you know, they talked about that and, and they also then talked about wearing fins while you're while you're out there, so you look like a seal. Hey, know, maybe that's below. why Amish don't get shark attacked. It's because they're always wearing darker colors, you know, no patterns. They don't go in the water, Jim. <laughs> Rob. Yeah, Jim. Fluke you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sandy, can I, can if I you're fi- listening to this, forgive us. Can, can I finish my story? Yes. So, so here, here's what they came to down down in the Bahamas. The restaurants. So. Back it up, they're blaming, tr- trying to blame like the uh, the cruise ships throwing garbage over, but they, they haven't been able to throw garbage over right because for, for years a, and stuff. They have a taste for lean cuisine. Yeah, so they they went over and over and over about all these different things that could happen. And what it was at the very end is that the restaurants there, when you're sitting uh, oceanside at the at these restaurants, right? They they are the restaurants are feeding chum, but right? they come out and ring a bell and. and they, they feed chum to all these sharks so the tourists can watch. And so now they associate people with food, you know, just like you associate. Literally the worst thing in the world. Yeah, just like, you know, feeding feeding a bear and then kind of figure out why the bear ate you when you're sleeping. That's why you chum in a boat 10 miles offshore. Right? I, I, well, chumming's chumming's illegal in uh, certain parts of certain states Absolutely. in the United States. But anyway, it was very, very interesting. Uh, all these different, 
Not at Walmart. Obviously not, because he I did feel it like to that poor guy in the, in, in the uh, photo booth or wherever. <laughs> There's a story there we need to get back to, but continue. That, that's all I had. I just, I, just wanted, I wanted to share that with you. Jim, Jim just fell asleep. I thought you were gonna. Chair. I thought you were gonna say it was like because people are wearing their swimsuits like COVID masks with their nose hanging out. So it's just. A... Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Jim's just shaking his head. Forgive us, for we we know not what we read. Um, next question: We hear about tannins helping prevent disease. Can you explain how and should every freshwater take some tannins for healthy fish? Every freshwater tank have tannins for healthy fish. So uh, a lot of tannins are antioxidants. Uh, some also have micro, micro, my, antimicrobial uh, effects, uh, which would uh, be antibacterial, antifungal, uh, antiviral. Some are also actually anti-mutagenic and a- anti-carcinogenic. So that, that's really cool. And I wouldn't say that all tanks need tannins, uh, but making your own or, or letting it happen naturally are better options than than the uh, you know store bought stuff. Not that it's bad. I, I don't know anybody that's ever had a problem using it. Uh, we actually use it uh, because we have just such large systems. Uh, but uh, we also uh, grow our own uh, catapa leaves, and and I I personally think that's a great source for tannins. Is that, is that what you guys use for tannins? I don't want to cut you off, Jimmy, but that's that's I can't let that one go. Is it just like catapa leaves, or what's what's your uh, botanical blend that you use at Seagrass? Well, that might be a trade secret, and then he has to kill yeah, you. We, we do. We we actually, yeah, we do use the catapa leaves because you you guys have planted your own trees out there, correct? Uh, for the catapa leaves, because I, at one time I ordered some, and you guys were out, and she says, uh, my salesperson says, I'll go pick you some, but you're gonna have to let them dry out, and so they came in and they were pretty green. And I let them dry out for a few days, and, and they they were just fine. Uh, the one thing I thought that was really interesting that you said was there's some plants that are, are anti-carcinogenic. What's that about? Yes, actually. Uh, uh, well, you know, it's the phenols in there. You know, they're, uh, the tannins are still – there's a lot of studies still to be done on them. And, and you know, not, not necessarily all tannins are necessarily – aren't all necessarily great for us, uh, e- even in eating them and stuff. Uh, not necessarily a, a great thing. A lot, lot of research still to be done, but because uh, you know that's a that's a really broad uh, group of of things. You know, over all the all the years we've seen, you know, all these documentaries on National Geographic and whatnot about these, uh, you know, the different people that have used whatever plant is available to cure what ails them out out, out there. And so I just find it very interesting, and, and I'm sure that all of our listeners would find that f- fascinating to to hear more about it um, down the road. Especially, I, I think Scott Fellman just his ears perked up when he uh, he heard the, the whole thing in the vibe. Like he felt the force the in the force. air talking about anti carcinogens. It's going to be on one of his blogs now. I hope so. Going to do some some homework. Next question we have is plop and drop after floating a bag or drip. Or bag and drip acclimate. I've heard people defend both techniques. I don't know what to think. So just to confirm, I'm assuming the plop and drop means plop, let the bag sit for 30 minutes, and then just simply scoop the fish out, plop them in your tank. So plop and drop versus the bag and drip. So let it acclimate and then drip acclimate into the bag over a longer period of time. So it's not just like shocking the fish into it. What are your preferred methods, sir? Okay, that that's that's an age old argument, and, and I don't think either side is ever going to uh, to to come meet in the middle on that. There's people that are staunchly for both. I mean, that it's it's almost like politics there. My opinion actually is both. It, it, it really depends <laughs> on the. It, it's going to depend on the species. It's going to depend on the shipping conditions. It's going to be depend on the water parameters, uh, and the entire process uh, for your approach. Really, if you pay attention, you know, you can have excess success with either. Uh, key factors are uh, temperature and pH. Uh, and uh, I like to use a water conditioner as well, regardless of which, which method used. And uh, if it's a fish that you know historically don't ship well, don't do well, I typically advocate for the drip style. So just to hit this point a little harder, let's take the same fish, right? 
I'm going to say it's a rummy nose Tetra that we bought from a farm in Florida, right? If that bag that I got has been sitting in the shipping for two, three days, the moment I'm going to get that big bag, it's filled with all of the waste from the fish. And the Correct. moment that I open that bag up, the pH is going to crash. I do not have without having some sort of like mad conditioner and then some hope and a prayer to get those fish living. So my method is the plop and drop. Don't open the bag until you've acclimated the temperature. And then when you open the bag, immediately get those fish out of there for the pH drop and the uh, uh, ammonia burn. Ah. Ah. Now, I went to a pet store. I got that same fish. Florida Rummy Nose Tetra. Brought it home. It has not been sitting in that bag for anything past two hours. Right? Maybe, we'll say four hours. Maybe I did a day of shopping before I brought it home because I'm inconsiderate. <laughs> right? That it's going to sit in your hot car. You're in Florida. It's 112. Not a good thing to do with your fish, by the way. But you brought it home. Well, you open the bag. The pH isn't going to crash. It hasn't been sitting in there in its own waste, making its own uh, little pocket of ecosystem. That's the time where, absolutely, drip acclimation. I, I have the time. I can do it for the fish. I'm not going to have to worry about that pH necessarily just taking the biggest shit and drip away, especially for a finicky fish such as Romeo Tetra. Seagrass Farms sends me Chinese algae eaters every two weeks. And what I've learned is that they don't like our water compared to the water they're coming from. And so what I do with those is I open the bag, I pour the fish into a bucket, and I put in some Amquil immediately. What about Prime? No, Amquil. I put an Amquil, and then I'll do a little drink. But you can huff Prime. We uh, have proof of you, that from Big Rich. Yeah, you you can you can huff farts too, but we don't do that, do we? No. <laughs> so the algae eaters, only it, the guy that couldn't smell. That's right, right. So the algae eaters, for some reason, don't like the Minnesota water. And if I if I just drop them into the water, I plop and drop, they will lay in the bottom, quiver until they die. I've actually done it where they they've laid in the bottom and quivered. I brought them back out of the, the tank, put them in the shipping water, and then they've come around, and then I've had to acclimate them. So there's certain fish that I know uh, that I get from Seagrass that just don't like the water here, and I have to do the drip acclimation. But Amquil goes a long way. When you open up those bags and throw in some Amquil, it goes a long, long ways, dude. We're not sponsored by Amquil, but call We us. should be. Call us. Next question. Um, this one was from an email I submitted um, saying... Love the podcast. I hear that fish farms sometimes use hormones to breed fish that are difficult to breed in captivity. I'm interested in breeding zebra knife fish for the hobby in the future, and I'm curious in exactly what hormone, in quotation marks, is. Is it an extract, a concoction, concoction or concentration Minnesota accent hailing from one and the only sexy Adam? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob's mom. So, uh... Yeah, how about it? Uh, tell us about hormones. So, so HCG is commonly used as human chorionic gonadotropin, uh, also uh, salmon gonadotropin and uh, carp pituitary gland for food fishes. For aquarium fishes, there's a, it's a product. There's a product out there called Overprim, which is uh, salmon gonadotropin releasing hormone with also uh, periodone, which is a dopamine inhibitor. You used for Alzheimer's in humans, uh, some uh, some other stuff. It's ironic uh, that he talks about Alzheimer's and forgets it, right? <laughs> probably the COVID still. Sorry, buddy, but, uh, we, we can't pick on you. But but those are going to be mo th th that's going to be used uh, for aquarium fish, not not for uh, food intended fish intended for food. And uh, individual countries are going to have different restrictions and regulations a as to what can be used legally. And it's both an it's an it's a concoction uh, of a, a hormone releasing agent plus the dopamine inhibitor. No, most it, popular one is something like that available to the average hobbyist, or is that uh, something you have to have a license for? No, I believe uh, I, I believe you can buy the Overprim uh, directly through the manufacturer. And is that uh, available here in the U.S.? Y yes, it is, and in Canada. No kidding. We've we've talked about this several times on the podcast and stuff, and I've never really heard anybody that had been able to you know to go over to Walmart and purchase this or get it off the internet. Well, we get a lot of questions about um, Siamese algae eaters in particular because they're almost non-existent to breed. The I got fox. them to do it twice by accident, and when I go online, I'm pretty much one of the few people that are able to 
not figure it out, but luckily get one batch and then never happen again. So if I was to try to breed a Siamese algae eater, which again, they're, they're farmed with hormones. Uh, is that what you recommend for the love potion number nine? Uh, it, you know, it, it's worth a try. Uh, uh, we, we've got farmers down here, uh, that, that are pretty much injecting anything to, to see if they can get it to spawn. So you don't know if you haven't tried it. I'm sitting here with a bottle of vape juice, like, come on, why aren't you breeding? Wow. <laughs> That's your whole life. Why aren't I breeding? Oh, so what has happened here in Minnesota is that we all have to wear face masks all the time now because, uh, um, our governor here in Minnesota has mandated that we all wear, wear face mask, and Rob's been wearing his uh, for 24 hours at a crack, and there's no oxygen to his brain anymore, so that's, he's being extremely stupid today. Well, I've been thinking of taking yeah. this mullet. I have a mullet wig from when I went on uh, Ohio Fish Rescue's uh, live stream. And I'm thinking of tearing it into like a face mask, so it just looks like this face mullet. Oh, yeah, you know you love it. <laughs> wow. I think we got off subject. I'm so sorry. But, uh, yeah, love potion number nine. Um, so the last one. It would well, I do have a, I have a question that went related back to that one. Well, before, right? This is okay. this is to you, Adam. Would concentrated okay. Minnesota accent hailing from the one and only Adam work? It All right, usually we, does. We're gonna put out like uh, a, a sensual, you know. I have Adam call call me on occasion sensual in the pain. evenings. I just put him on speakerphone, and my wife just gets all jiggly, jiggly. Are you sure <laughs> she's just not shaking in pain? No, no, she's all jiggly, jiggly. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to have that visual image. Thank you. Uh, but, uh, you know, look out for that CD. We're going to put Concentrated Minnesota, and we're going to have him read the uh, first, you know, the interlude alphabet. of Fifty Shades of Grey, and we'll post that to our uh, donators. So <laughs> if you're looking to get a piece of that action, go to AquariumGuysPodcast.com, out of the website. You can uh, donate right to the show. <laughs> I would donate just not to hear this shit right now. James right now, he's losing it. This is the best part. <laughs> he's like, why am I on here? I'm so getting fired. <laughs> So I have a question about using hormones for breeding. Are you talking, are you talking about fish? We, yeah, we're talking about fish, just not, just you checking. know, Rob or anything else. Yeah. I got one after this. Um, how successful is it? Cause I'm assuming it's not 100% successful 100% of the time, is it? No, no, it's not. And and some fish, it doesn't help at all. And and, and some fish, you might not. Uh, like I said, the, the overprim is, is the most popular one, uh, but they're the, – also, uh, human uh, chorionic gonadotropin and a carp pituitary gland. Uh, you don't really know until you try, and uh, you know it, it. Serious, serious producers are going to try all three, or uh, you know, depending on what type of fish they're trying to spawn. So, what what type of fish do you almost always have to use that for? That you, that you they breed down there in Florida in quantity. Uh, they uh, they're doing uh, black ghost knives. Uh, their uh, loaches are are done with uh, that. I'm trying to think of, I'm intrigued. Which loaches? Yeah, which loaches? What loaches? Uh, Everybody wants to know what loaches. Well, nobody's got them, you know, commercially available yet. Uh, but uh, the the Tia macrocantha, you know, your your standard clown loach. There's been a lot of work done on that. Oh, uh -huh. so. Are you going to have to kill us now? No. Just Rob's. <laughs> He'd like to. <laughs> so I'm, I, I want to know more about this black ghost knife breeding because I didn't think it had been done yet. Uh, yeah, uh, we don't have any right now, uh, but uh, one of the farmers, uh, we, we had some. I got to actually see their breeders. They were about two and a half foot long. It was, it was really cool. Dang. So, real quick, how many babies do they have, or how do they produce? I mean, are they egg layers, I'm assuming? Uh, that particular fish, yes, that is an egg layer. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I don't know their clutch size. See, I'm just really intrigued. I like knife fish, and I didn't know anybody was captive breeding them. This is actually kind of cool to find out. So, See, are they doing any, any uh, commercial uh, quantities, or is it just... Uh, Hit or miss. Well, last I will say last year uh, we had commercial quantities. Uh, of course, you know f fish are like uh, are, are, it's like dirt farming. You know, not not every crop produces the same way. When these fish that have been bred hormonally, is there anything that changes in these fish? So, like they would not do it naturally, or they would be more susceptible to hormones because that's how they were bred. 
that I don't know. Pro- probably would take uh, a bit of research on that. Well, we should get a grant, quit our jobs, and go do that. You should. There you go. More tanks. More tanks. More, more tanks. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick up some salt. All right. Next question. Does replicating biotopes really help fish live long and healthy lives if they've never been in such a region, i.e. tank race? That brings up something uh, that, that I, I wanted to touch on. You know, that's really probably a personal opinion, you know, either way. Uh, I, I don't know that there's any science that's going to prove that in any direction. But uh, something that we focus on at Seagrass and something that I focus on as an individual uh, uh, are the five freedoms of uh, animal welfare. Uh, number one would be freedom from, from thirst or hunger, uh, which is uh, means they have ready access to fresh water and a diet to maintain full health and vigor. Uh, freedom from discomfort which would be providing an appropriate environment, including shelter and a comfortable resting area. Uh, Three would be freedom from pain, injury, and disease, which would uh, require prevention or rapid diagnosis and treatment. Uh, Freedom to express normal and natural behavior, providing uh, sufficient space, proper facilities, and company of the animal's own kind. And freedom from fear and distress, uh, which... uh, ensuring conditions and treatment, which avoid mental suffering. So if you go by the five uh, freedoms of animal welfare, yeah, even, even if those fish have never been in the wild, uh, you'd want, you, you do want to try to duplicate is their environment as much as you can, as well as, you know, give them some enrichment. You know, that, that's really big in uh, public aquaria and zoo. Uh, and no reason that doesn't apply, apply to uh, fish as well. I mean, I feel like that should have been part of the Geneva Convention. I love that answer. I thought that was great. Yeah. If only humans got treated the same way. That's right. But you still it, never will be. That's because I stink. <laughs> Literally. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> All right. We have some live questions. Medicated food or medicated water? What's your preferred medi- uh, method? It's gonna gonna depend on what I'm medicating for. Uh, uh, bacterial issues uh, are always gonna be a food. Uh, e- even even some uh, flukes, uh, you, you know, uh, you can do the food as well. Uh, uh, worms, food. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Food for uh, uh, deworming. Uh, so yeah, it's really really gonna depend on the parasite. All right, next question. I've talked about this lump on my beta a lot. Taylor from Simply Beta says it's a cancerous tumor. Beta is still acting completely normal. Is there anything I can do for it? It is possible it will go away, or is it just something that will eventually kill the fish? So, um, Dr. Fish, I'm going to send this to you personally so you can see the picture. Did you get that message, sir? Yes, I did. Excellent. So for those that are at home, it's a very brilliant blue beta. We're getting kind of like a top angle at the beta. It looks like it's directly on its head. It is a light pink. Uh, almost looks like a pencil eraser that's been shrunk on the beta. Yeah. Um, it's a very unusual. I can't say I've ever seen a, a growth on a beta like this. I used to see them on a few um, low-quality flower horns I got in, and those definitely ended up being cancer as well. What's your thoughts, Doctor? Uh, it, it probably is, uh, it, there could be, there could be some, uh, viral issue there as well, uh, which, which may be contributing to it. Uh, but, uh, not a lot you're going to do to that. And so Taylor, who we've had on this program was, uh, dead on. So I've seen some people like even wanting to take and remove those, especially on, I have friends in Canada that have marijuana. They'll have a growth or a sore or a blemish, and they want to bring that uh, fish up to quality because they may think it depends upon its life. Um, watch its behavior. If it's acting normal, leave it alone. I mean, if, as long as it's feeding healthy, swimming healthy, it's not taking uh, away from its life, those five points that you mentioned there, doctor. But if you were to remove it, this particular fish, number one, betas are so small to try to remove them. They go through so much stress. And clove oil dosage, that's how you normally would take like a koi or an arowana and try to repair something. 
uh, it's so delicate and hard, especially on something that uh, has a labyrinth uh, lung. I, I wouldn't recommend doing it to a beta. But even if you could, the stress alone, probably on, on top of its head like that, would not be something that could be removed without threatening the live fish or having a high probability of death. Yeah, you'd have to be a skilled surgeon to get that off without hurting that fish. I don't think that's going to happen. I'd absolutely agree. All right. So next question. Again, we're getting these these particular questions live and going back and forth from some of the recorded to the new ones. I have neon green resboras, which have a growth on their bottom lip. I don't think it's cotton mouth, uh, as only a few of them have it. It hasn't impacted their feeding, life longevity, more likely scar flesh as they like to swim uh, face first into the glass in excitement before feeding. Is this common, or is there something I can do to reduce their reduce the size or it? Must be of it. Mm. So, do you think that's like a duck lips, but just on the bottom lip? Is that, your, is that how you're reading? I've it? actually seen that in a few of the smaller fish, and it see it's not ick, but if it's what I'm thinking, it is. It's just like a little wart under their bottom lip. Am I not describing it right? I wish he'd have sent pictures. I yeah, picture does a thousand words there. But um as far as like neon green resbores, I'm trying to see if I've had these. I'm actually looking up a picture. Um that and there's always like marketing, like some pet stores that open up fish really don't know what they're uh what they're looking at. Which I uh I don't mean to shit on your local fish store, but Okay, scientific I have had names these. would be so wonderful. The scientific name is uh, I'll, <laughs> a message it to you because I'm going to butcher it. Micro, actually, I'm going to try to butcher it. Micro Divario Kubatai. Is that the stuff Adam drinks in the morning? <laughs> no, that's kombucha. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I fell asleep for Kubatai Resbora, probably. Yes, that is correct. The green Kubatai. Yep. Oh, here it is. He sent a picture. That's why I, I was a little bit uh, confused. These things look like uh, they're like more like an ember tetra. They're they're kind of the same size for those that are listening online, uh, listening on the podcast. Um, except they're absolute neon green uh, when they're fully bright, and they look like uh, you dipped them in. Um, what's the fluid in your car? Antifreeze. 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 Thank you. I haven't seen this when or, I had them, but I never had uh, a Jack, lot of them for a long time. So. Or Jack Daniels. I, I I don't see it commonly or anything, so I I, I don't know if there's something with uh, those particular fish or what. Yeah, oh, he, he's, here's he's, a picture, actually. He sent a picture. There we go. Now he sent a picture, so that's why it's nice to do these live. Yeah. So we have a picture here, and it looks like it's actually a tab out front of its mouth, like it was a piece of something hanging off. Or uh, it is a piece of dead skin hanging off its front lip. Could it be a parasite? Could be like it is kind of circular, like a small fluke. But that'd be very weird for all of them in the same spot. That's true. My guess is yes, they hit the glass. Some of them hit the glass, and they have some damage that's now stuck to their lip. That's what it looks like. Maybe they got a fat lip. You see it, doctor? Uh, where is it in the? Uh... I will send it to you right now, doctor. Looks like he's smoking a cigarette. The little fish is smoking a cigarette. You know what? Someone needs to make that fish smoke a cigarette. Make that happen, internet. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, That's isn't that wild great? He's, he's no, like, no, I have not seen that before. He's like literally got... He looks like he has a piece of food in his mouth. That's what it looks like. Yeah, he does. You know, it, it almost looks like a fish... Uh, like, uh, I've gotten in goldfish, big goldfish that have like the white little fish lice on them. It almost looks like that... It but says it, here it's that, so hard to tell. Here's what I really think it is an injury because it says this. He says the scales can be seen protruding from the growth, like it's though it's a piece of skin tab on the front. Oh, okay. So if you have an injury in the front of the fish, like I have a ball of shark that I saved in that tank right there, and my ball of shark is what twelve inches. You, you see it right there, Jimmy. Man inches or right. girl inches? I mean, uh, pff, it's, I'd say eight. That, well, then it's your, your <laughs> inches, not my inches. <laughs> But I got it, and it had a lot of face damage, and it was because it was stressed out, and it whacked the the end of the tank, and it had skin tabs hanging out like that, um, and it took a very long time to heal. I don't even know if he rubbed him off himself, but again, that's a bigger fish. I got it when it was young, so maybe it did grow out of it, but when you see those injuries, generally you'll see the whole damage around it, so that's my assumption is they, they rubbed into the glass and hit it. 
I love picture questions. Um, next uh, one, it, we got a message from Biggs. I'm not sure if this is Chris Biggs, but it says, no question. Just uh, keep kicking ass. Keep it up. Great guy. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's James' favorite question right there. Yeah, the, even people are saying just a common word. Freeze it off with <laughs> the stick you get from Walmart. It should be just fine. Yeah, don't, don't freeze your fish. They're, I can't explain, begin to explain the reasons why. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have got, got different things. That, uh, but So that's what I love about the internet is that there's so many people that out there that have seen things and might have a, a good idea. And when we don't have an answer, that is fantastic. Everybody throws out what they think it might be. The crowdsourcing, though. Yeah, chicken pox. I think that's wrong. Next one. Is there such thing as false stress ick, or is there maladies that look like it other than velvet? Understanding that stress is a typical way that most uh, illnesses get into our fish. I don't know anything about false ick or stress ick, but there is definitely a difference between clearing a disease, a fish of a disease, and, and actually eliminating a parasite. At a low enough parasite load, uh, with really good water, water quality and, and prime nutrition, it, it can seem that your fish might be cured, but you may have a, a, a low amount of uh, parasite activity in there that can come back. Uh, it, sporadic bouts of the same disease uh, when stressors are added. Uh, another uh, another point to keep in mind would be that uh, all treatments should be, uh, you know, their full dosage. For the, the the full medication plan uh, duration, uh, just like with uh, antibiotic resistance, uh, parasites can also become resistant to other treatments as well, not just antibiotics. So single-celled organisms really, you know, they evolve a lot faster than we do. So the only time, because I never believed in this either, this whole like you know false ick thing, I was like, well, you just didn't take care of the ick. Well. There's only one case that I've had with this, and it's really, really weird. Adam gave me his feeder guppies. And when I got those They're feeder guppies. Answers, you fluker. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got these in, I put them in the tank, and they were fine for the first two months. You know, they're feeder guppies. They're nice and strong individuals, right? So after two months, a couple of them started showing uh, white spots. I'm like, oh, crap, I got ick in the tank. Nope. I didn't treat it because I didn't have the medication on hand and it was planted. And I'm like, I'll just scoop them out. I got lazy. Not going to lie to you. That and I'm like, well, they're feeder guppies. Let's see if they make it. Maybe in the next episode, I can make a joke that the, that the fish died. No, they got better. None of the other fish, and this is a 125 gallon tall. None of the other fish in the tank got it whatsoever. I didn't have a UV filter at the time. Nothing. They just It just cleared up and went away. Couldn't explain it. Six months later, just the endlers flared up again. Like it just it was just a couple endlers. It was like only females in the tank that, that did it and couldn't spread it in the tank. I don't know what, what was going on. It flared up and I had a new batch of endlers. They did not have it. I had them in a, a separate tank. Didn't happen. Moved them into the tank. They never caught it because, again, they were different sizes and just never happened it just went away and they come in waves those are the original endlers i got from them they bred and now of course you know they have a shorter lifespan i've had them now since the podcast before you know the podcast started and a couple of the adults passed away but i still don't uh don't have an issue with the tank no ick no nothing no treatments uh, it's very weird so I, i'm beginning to like not necessarily see it but maybe not understand the cause if it's not acting like ick it's not affecting the other fish in the tank I don't really know what it is. Is it possible that it just doesn't take off? I mean, I don't have the tank super warm. It's planted. I don't even treat that one really with salt like I should and preach. I, I can't really figure that one out. Do you have any recommendations of what that possibly could be? Maybe it is just ick on one for some reason. Uh, no, no. If you had if you had ick uh, in in a tank like that, it's it's going to definitely spread. Uh, it, it could be a, another issue. Completely, it could be a, a, a protozoan issue that may just be uh, presenting similar to it. Maybe that's what it is because I got that in my batches of my my tank. Those where those endlers came from, they've always done that. So once the females reach a certain size, pretty good size, and after they've had a few batches of babies, they always get these little white spots. I tried treating it like ick; it wasn't ick, and then. You know, they'd be fine, and that's just 
kind of how it would work. And I always wondered what it was because it wasn't ick, but it's like, well, what is it then? Fish pox. Any, any recommendations for trial and error, like another medication that just a test to see if it's something else? Salt. Bleach. Salt. I, I love you. You're a man after my own heart. I feel I'll like you, some salt. you're doing it to pander to us, and, and we like it. Continue. Keep it up. Keep it up. All right. I'm just seeing if this is a question here. Sure is. My Queen Molly just had a batch of 120 fry. Number one. Congratulations. Wow. That's, a that's, lot. A, yeah. that's a hefty girl right there. She, she dummy thick. Yep. Next day, it started to prolapse. Okay, this is becoming a lot worse. After three days, it looked like she was turning inside out. I had no choice but to call. I understand this is a semi-common uh, thing, but can be reversed if caught early enough. What the hell's that? Is this, uh, it, that? That I don't I don't know anything about that. Did this come from the down under? I demand pictures next time you have a prolapse fish anus. So you would want pictures. Is, is it possible that, that during birth that she pushed out? Well, it's 120 plus fry. That's a that's a hefty thing for a big, big Molly. Like that's that's a massive deal right there. And Molly's for the live bears have I think some of the biggest live bear. Like guppies are smaller, sometimes swords can be smaller. Well, I I grew up on the farm. It is it wasn't uncommon for a a cow or a sheep to push out its innards. Uh, during childbirth, and the vet would have to come push them back in and and attach them on the inside. So, uh, to me, I think that's what happened. Is that I think she pushed so hard that that she pushed uh, pushed out her innards. That uh, that explains a lot of your mannerisms. Well, on that note, we demand pictures, and we will post that on our Facebook page. Uh, not safe for work for everyone to see. Fluke you, fluke, fluke everyone. It, this is the only video I have. It was the day after my last fry. Oh, we got pictures, Jimmy. Oh, my. Oh, it is. Look at that. I got to send it to doctor. Doctor, we need you to see this uh, prescription stat. I called it. Hold on. I absolutely called it. It's it's seriously like it's taking a giant pink crap. You got to see it. We're going to post this on our Facebook page for all to enjoy. Oh, my. Oh, there's even audio. 25 piece. Oh, I got to restart the video. Here we go. For everyone listening. Looks like Big Mama here in the middle of the night. Hit me. With another 25 piece. Wow, those are again, those are not small babies what, uh, whatsoever. So that was uh, to add to the almost 50 that I have she had two days ago. Ooh. Well, they're in there somewhere. Right. That's super beef hormone right there. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, big mama, on your first big litter of fishy kittens. Fishy kittens. Well, thank you for that, uh, annoying Florida guy. Well, if if she took two to three days to give birth to all that, there definitely was complications. Oh, 100%. Like, it shouldn't take more than, what, a couple hours? I would hope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They squeeze them out pretty quickly. What What do you think, uh, Dr. Fish? Do you think that's, uh, that she pushed her innards out? Yeah, that that's what it would... I, I would assume that is. That's what it would look like to me, too. I, I've never had an issue like this, but it, it comes to, like, the horrible mad science belief that if you're about to cull it and you have to cull it for the sake of its, uh, you know, own suffering, do you perform a C-section just to see if there's anything left? Just to see if there's, like, stillborns left after 120 plus, you know, or, or heaven forbid there's still some live? Woo! I'm loving this. You guys got to keep sending your weird stuff. You know what? For Doctor Fish episode three, we're gonna put it out right now. I, I will, I'll, I'll put, put out the, on my own wallet here. We're gonna give you guys maybe a cash prize or something up with some decent value if you can bring us the weirdest shit to bring Doctor Fish. Stories, that'd be cool. Video, picture, whatever. We're not gonna be biased. A story is worth a thousand pictures. Fish related people. Yes, I mean fish. Re- <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Let's clear this up. Fish related because fish I'll, related. I do not want to see clowns coming out of rhinos' butts. Or no, something. and and let's let's also put another uh, a, disclaimer know, disclaimer on that one, and put uh, nothing that uh, involves you know naughty things. mistreatment of fish. Absolutely. It has to be medically induced. Something that you've seen. Something that was out of your control. There, there is your disclaimers for the price. But uh, that was crazy. That was crazy. Cat is here. Here's a little bit more. The sack kept coming out, hanging behind her, the full length of her body 
at that point I made the call. <laughs> yeah. If she's dragging on a tail the length of her, that would be that would be it. And it's just a normal, you know, uh black white Dalmatian Molly. So Question of the day, my friend. Question of the day. Oh, and uh, for those that uh, aren't part of the Discord, they already made a meme of that uh, green Rasbora, and they put a Marlboro in his mouth. So don't miss <laughs> out. Go to AquariumGuysPodcast.com and join the debauchery. All right, Adam, do you have any more questions, man? Uh, none that would maybe um, – the only ones that I have left are probably going to infringe on their uh... – copyright and stuff so i'm good for tonight i learned quite a bit and i was impressed with the uh now i'm intrigued to get those regular coolies again right so just if they don't hide and poof when they go in my tanks you can see them when they're at jimmy's house so they they hide away because they they heard horrible rock music that's right right well they're one of my favorite fish and they used to be so hardy you guys we were talking about this last time and they used to be so super hardy and then boom they just kept on coming in like crap so so, quick question, uh, Dr. Fish. What What is the difference between the black coolie loach and the striped coolie loach? Are they the same fish? Or are they different fish? No, no, they are a different fish and, and come from different places. So, from different different areas of the world? Correct. And, and, you guys, and, and different environments. And do you, guys, assuming... do you guys find that, that the blacks are, the black coolie loaches are, are more hardy than the other ones? In my experience over the years, I'd say yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're, that that has changed. Uh, back 10, 15 years ago, I would say it was the the opposite. We we could barely keep the blacks alive, and and the the regular coolie loach did fine. Are they are they captive bred or are they uh, wild caught? No, those are all wild. Do the black ones need brackish, or are they just pure fresh? They can go either way. But both of them really, you know, over over the to- over time, we've held both both ways. But uh, yeah, it's it, it, it. I'm don't have an answer as to why the the stripe ones aren't doing as well as of late. Yeah, they can go either way, just like Jimmy in the '80s. Still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, still. Oh, I have a question, and it might it's a kind of an important one. Oh, oh, you know, I'm married. Adam. No, no, no. Oh, okay, so. Um, I was told back in the day that if you – and I've done this before. You remember mandarin gobies, the saltwater mandarin gobies? Yeah. Um, they used to cyanide them back when, in order to catch them. They used to squirt them with a squirt bottle of cyanide mixture. And then you'd get them and they just slowly die off. They'd just wither away. They wouldn't eat. Well, I was told the trick. You remember Ty, Jim? Yep. Jim, I told us this trick. And I did it, and it actually worked where if you put methylene blue in the water, you'd, like, make it so dark, dark blue, and then you keep them in a bare-bottom tank. I got them to acclimate them, and I got them to acclimate on food. Why does methylene blue remove toxins? Uh, th- I'm not exactly sure how the, that that works exactly. Uh, I, I've heard a little bit about that, and uh, I, I'll look into it and, and have that for our next episode. Ooh, Thanks. a to be continued. You know, I want to cut it off here because oh, I've been cut off before. I don't feel like we can beat the whole like prolapsed fish conversation. <laughs> like that's that's the peak of the evening, guys. Like it ain't going to get better from there. We're going to pander from there from this moment on. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we, again, we've been collecting questions since before we started the first Dr. Fish episode. We're going to continue giving questions. If you want to submit your questions, according to guys, dot com by the website, join the join the fun. Send us an email, you know, put on the note for Dr. Fish and we'll save it for him. I mean, because we get weekly questions. We need questions for James, right? That way, we, you know, he can uh, continue the fun debauchery and, uh, you know, th- it keeps him keeps him healthy from COVID. I mean, without us, he may have not survived. Just saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking right now at this moment, he's thinking, I wish I would have died. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast sucks that no, much. No, no, no. <laughs> Poor James. Poor James. Well, thanks again, James, for coming on, man. And uh, you know, anything else you want to tell your your actually massive growing fan base? Uh, no, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I love sharing information. Uh, anything that I know, uh, I, I'll, I'm happy to share. Uh, 
And uh, I, I learn from these things as well. And, and if I don't know, I'm just going to say I don't know. And yeah. he has a network of people to contact if he doesn't know. Trust us. And and I don't know if if you know this, uh, Doctor Fish, but your your house is haunted. There's somebody going back and forth in the hallway. I think it's your wife. Uh, it surely is. <laughs> well, we're glad she's feeling better too. So yeah. Well, I think that's all we got for uh, this week. Tune in again Mondays at seven p.m. Come uh, come join the fun. Um, again, thank you to Seagrass Farms for sponsoring this episode and giving us uh, the chance to uh, speak with Doctor Fish. And. Uh, uh, see you in the next podcast and hopefully uh, again you have a fish group and you want someone to speak uh, and have it a little bit more fun than the boring grab uh, conversation message us we, uh, we'll see what we can do bye everybody thank you very much take care be safe Thanks, guys, for listening to the podcast. Please go to your favorite place where podcasts are found, whether it be Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever they can be found. Like, subscribe, and make sure you get push notifications directly to your phone so you don't miss great content like this. I never knew that a Minnesota accent could be so sexy until I heard Adam's voice. Go fuck yourself, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy, don't you know.